Everybody knows that pestilences have a way of recurring in the world. There have been as many plagues as wars in history. Yet always plagues and wars take people equally by surprise. Those words were written by the French writer Albert Camus in his classic novel La Peste, The Plague, in 1947. 74 years later, they have a disturbing presence. Outbreaks, epidemics, and pandemics are a fact of nature and a recurring feature of recorded history. From the plague of Athens in 4030 BC to the Black Death, the 1918 influenza pandemic, and now COVID-19. But that does not mean we're helpless to prevent them, prepare for them, or mitigate their impact. We're not prisoners of fate or nature. More than any humans in history, we have the ability to anticipate pandemics, to prepare for them, to unravel the genetics of pathogens, to detect them at their earliest stages, to prevent them spiraling into global disasters and to respond when they do. And yet, here we are, entering the third year of the most acute health crisis in a century, and the world remains in its grip. This pestilence, one that we can prevent, detect and treat, continues to cast a long shadow over the world. Instead of meeting in the aftermath of the pandemic, we're meeting at the fresh wave of cases and deaths crashes into Europe, with untold and uncounted deaths around the world. And although other regions are seeing declining or stable trends, if there is one thing we have learned, it's that no region, no country, no community and no individual is safe until we are all safe. The emergence of the highly mutated Omicron variant underlines just how perilous and precarious our situation is. South Africa and Botswana should be thanked for detecting, sequencing and reporting this variant not penalized. Indeed, Omicron demonstrates just why the world needs a new accord on pandemics. Our current system dis disincentivizes countries from alerting others to threats that will inevitably land on their shores. We don't yet know whether Omicron is associated with more transmission, more severe disease, more risk of reinfections, or more risk of evading vaccines. Scientists at WHO and around the world are working urgently to answer these questions. We shouldn't need another wake-up call. We should all be wide awake to the threat of this virus. But Omicron's very emergence is another reminder that although many of us might think we're done with COVID-19, it's not done with us. We're living through a cycle of panic and neglect. Hard-won gains could vanish in an instant. Our most immediate task, therefore, is to end this pandemic. Indeed, our ability to end this pandemic is a test of our collective ability to prevent, respond effectively to future pandemics because the same principles apply. The same principles, courageous and compassionate leadership, fidelity to science, 
generosity in sharing the fruits of research and an unshakable commitment to equity and solidarity. If we cannot apply those principles now to tame COVID-19, how can we hope to prevent history repeating? And we cannot end this pandemic unless we solve the vaccine crisis. In less than a year, almost 8 billion vaccines have been administered around the world, the largest vaccination campaign in history. More than a year ago, before the, virus, the first vaccines were approved, WHO and our partners established the ACT Accelerator, COVAX and CITAP to facilitate equitable access to vaccines, tests, treatments, and PPE. And we have shown that these mechanisms work. COVAX has now shipped more than 550 million vaccine doses, including almost 250 million doses in the last two months, more than it shipped in the first seven months of this year. Last week, CTAP and the Medicines Patent Pool finalized its first licensing agreement with the Spanish National Research Council, a transparent, global, and non-exclusive license for a serological antibody test. 